Well, to be honest with you, in, in my about five years really covering the league and, and keeping a close eye on things, this is the biggest trade offseason news I've heard of and been a part of. I mean, it's no secret that Paul Rabel, since being drafted, has been the face of this league, and he's earned that right. I mean, he has played at an extremely high level. I think the way he prepares, the way he markets, all the things he does has, uh, has been good for the league, good for him, good for the sport. And a lot of the connection to Paul has been to Boston. So to think of him now playing for New York in a Lizards uniform is shocking to me. I mean, he's one of those guys, you can make the correlation to other sports that you think of, he's going to play his entire career in one uniform because there is a cachet that goes with, with that. And, and clearly to me, and I haven't spoken with Paul, this is something he would have to have signed off on and thinks is good for him and good for his legacy his future his ability to win championships so that being said uh this is the biggest news i've heard of or been a part of or or seen uh, in my time covering this league now structurally the way this deal works out it's clear boston is trying to rebuild again i haven't spoken with paul or anybody in boston but my opinion is is that they went to paul and said look we're gonna kind of blow this thing up do you want to be a part of a rebuilding effort and um he may have clearly said, no, I, I'd, I'd rather not. And I, I wouldn't blame him for that. I mean, he's still got a lot of time left, but it's going to be interesting in Boston for a couple of years now because what they've done is they've just stockpiled picks. I mean, they bring in Carolinas and Max Seabold, and I think Seabold can provide some leadership and production, but he's he's not going to replace Paul Rabel. But they've brought in a, a bunch of picks, and they moved Carolinas to Ohio for another pick. So they're clearly – I'm going to pay attention to the draft in the next couple of years, which is something that we've all been critical of them in the past. And a big reason for that, I think, was Paul Rabel. He he sort of put a blanket on that organization where we're OK. We don't need to worry about the draft. We've got the best player. Let's just try and sprinkle in the pieces around him to to give us a championship. And, and they got one with Paul. And obviously, Ryan Boyle was a part of it. There were some other names, but it all started and, and finished with Paul in Boston. So now. Paul goes to New York, and, and we've seen this from New York before, not to this level in terms of a, of a star and a player like Paul Rabel, but I I have doubts. I, I, I do, just because of, of past, uh, of, of the history of, of bringing in a bunch of big names, egos, and guys who love the ball uh, to New York, and I think uh, Joe Spelina does, does a hell of a job coaching and, and managing those egos, but this will be his, his biggest task, and and Rob Pinnell and Paul Rabel playing on the same team is is on paper one of those things where if this marriage works, it's as good as we'll have um, in professional lacrosse. If it doesn't work, I could see it being very, very ugly. So it, it'll be entertainment either way. Uh, obviously, as a fan of the game, I hope it works out well, but, uh, but it, it should be interesting. And and I really think New York is continuing to show that it's just all about trying to win a championship and um, and bring as much attention to that organization as they can. And once again, they've achieved it. So uh, it, it, it's a big day for the sports, a big day for the league. And uh, it just adds intrigue and excitement for what is a season that will be coming up here pretty soon. 